This is right scapula. Superior, inferior, lateral and medial sides. This is the anterior surface of the scapula. This is the lateral border. This is the medial or the vertebral border. And this is the superior border. Inferior angle, superior angle and the lateral angle. On the anterior surface, this area is called subscapular fossa. Subscapularis muscle is attached to the subscapular fossa. Here you can see scapular notch. This is coracoid process of scapula. At the lateral angle, this is glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa. And this is acromion behind the glenoid fossa or posterior to the glenoid fossa. An important ligament called coracoclavicular ligament is attached to the coracoid process. There are several other structures that are attached to the coracoid process which we will discuss later. Now I will turn this to the posterior surface. On the posterior surface you can identify the spine of the scapula. The spine ends at its lateral end at the acromion. On the posterior surface above the spine lies the supraspinous fossa and below it lies the infraspinous fossa. Supraspinatus muscle is attached to the supraspinous fossa and infraspinatus muscle is attached to the infraspinous fossa here. This is right scapula and this is right clavicle. Now we will articulate them together. They are articulated at the acromioclavicular joint here. Now remember when you articulate them to leave a reasonable gap between the two bones here so that the structures from the root of the neck can pass into the upper limb and the thorax.